hands-on with the Vega 64 and breakaway box from Sonnet. Ever since I bought my 2016 MacBook Pro, I've always wanted an external GPU that is finally reality with Hi Sierra 10.13.4. So I did not hesitate to get the highest supported graphics card by Apple on the market, which is the Vega 64. Sonnet does have a bundle that includes the Vega 64 for $12.99. And while this is a little high, it is a deal in today's market with crypto mining taking over the demand for graphics cards. So we can see right here, it comes in two boxes, one for the breakaway box and another for the graphics card. Quick look on the outside of the box. We indeed have EGFX breakaway box 650. And taking a look at Sonnet's own website, it says that this box does indeed actually act as a 750 watt, which is recommended for the Vega car because of its high power demand. This case is also AMD officially approved and it charges your laptop at a full 87 watts. So you're gonna get full charging when running full load on this unit. Very, very nice. Now taking a quick glance here at the box itself, you can see it is a very simplistic design. A little disappointed with the I.O. ports as there's just one Thunderbolt connection and your AC plug. I was hoping for a daisy chain or an internal hard drive much like the Mantis Venus, but that enclosure is not recommended for the Vega 64. It does come with a very, very small Thunderbolt 3 cable. I will have to upgrade this as it's not long enough. Going ahead and unboxing the graphics card, you can see it is nicely packed. We didn't have to worry about damage and shipping at all. And it does come with an AMD disc. We won't have to use it in this case, as this whole setup is just plug and play. That's what I love about this. And we can see there's a plastic triangle to stop your fan from spinning and shipping. And there we go. Feast your eyes on that beauty. It is very, very thick. Let's take a look at the I.O. ports. We got one HDMI and three display ports. Pretty slick if I do say so myself. So let's go ahead and get this installed. We're gonna remove the cover here. Now this cover basically just feels like a regular cheap PC case that you may buy. So nothing special here, folks. We open it up, we can see right away here, we got the power supply, 650 watts. Now this is removable if you ever have to replace it or upgrade. And we got our cooling fan. Very quiet also when in operation. We got three zip ties and a spare screw inside just in case you lose one all right let's go ahead and remove the top bracket here so we can get our card installed we're going to grab a screwdriver and remove these two spacers just like that now this power supply has two eight pin six plus two connectors we will be using both of these in the vega as it calls for some massive power so let's go ahead and insert the card here and it, there's a clip it'll slide right in and clip just like that all right let's go ahead and put this thing back together we'll screw on our cover and then screw down the graphics card to the box we'll also go ahead and plug in our power to our graphics card it's two on the right and the six on the left this goes for both sections now these are keyed so you don't have to worry about putting them in the wrong way. Now let's go ahead and slide our lid back on, screw down the back here, and we will be all set to go. We'll plug in our power supply, and then go ahead and stick our Thunderbolt 3 cable in. And now you have to look very closely on this because it doesn't go in all the way and it feels a little janky. So that's something to keep an eye on when you're doing this. All right, let's plug this into the MacBook. Fingers crossed, the box has lit up and up in the right corner. And if we go over and click on the microchip, it indeed recognizes that AMD Radeon RX Vega 64. So we're in business, but when we bring up the Apple menu, it does not see it as a primary graphics card. This is because we'll need to run from the graphics card directly to the monitor through DisplayPort or HDMI. I'll touch upon this again later. All right, let's go ahead and run a Geekbench on all three GPUs and see what we get. All right, now the Vega on OpenCL, we get a score of 137393. And the Radeon 460 coming in at 48726, HD Graphics 530, 19494. 
So we can see quite a bit of difference right off the bat. Now, in order to use the Vega as your primary driver, you're gonna have to connect through DisplayPort or HDMI directly to your external monitor. If we try running it directly through Thunderbolt and that's it, you can see that the card does not get recognized and it runs on the 460 card. So you're gonna have slow performance and no use. This is something Apple's gotta get fixed in the future because this is supported on PCs right now. All right, now connected back through DisplayPort, we're gonna run a Valley benchmark here at ultra quality 2560 by 1440. And we can see it is a pretty impressive 61.1 frames per second, a score of 2555. Comparing that to the same settings as the internal, we're at 15.6 frames, score 655. Wow. And this was the top of the line maxed out 2016 MacBook Pro, ladies and gentlemen. So we can tell that Vega really drives some graphics. Now let's do a Deus Ex test. We're running at 2560 by 1066. We got ultra texture, but we're on high on everything else. So yes, there was a little tweaking here to make this run decent. And I have been playing this game on the settings and it's been pretty decent. The only time you get a stutter is at the loading parts. But we can see the breakdown right here, ladies and gentlemen. Vega on the left, internal on the right. What an impressive difference. And like I said, playing the game itself is pretty damn smooth. It is pretty surreal to think about where this is going when you connect an external graphics card and have this much power on such a slim MacBook. All right, let's run our next benchmark. This is Tomb Raider from 2013. We're running at 2560 by 1066 again. 75 Hertz refresh rate. This is with V-Sync monitor. And we got some high texture and the normal shadows and shadow resolution. So this is a little less than Deus Ex, but we can see right here, the Vega on the left, internal on the right, killing it once again. Now, one of the big reasons I bought this external graphics card was for Final Cut Pro 10. And while it does work, I am not impressed because right here, it does not work with background rendering or transcoding. We can see it's using the Radeon 460 for that operation. When you're running the timeline in playback, this is when it does use the Vega 64. We can see it ramping up there. Problems, there is glitching. You can see right here, it does not refresh and get rid of the color wheels. There needs to be a lot of work done on this part. And we can see when we go down in the timeline and scrub, we are getting glitching again. This makes it very hard to do any editing. In fact, I had to unplug the Vega 64 just to get some editing done because this was causing such a frustration. Also note that the Vega 64 does not run on export, but it does, however, run on export on ScreenFlow. We can see right here the Vega is ramping up and I'm exporting an HEVC codec. This is an hour and 20 minute screen capture. And without the Vega, it ran at 943.04 export time with the Vega 941.06. So it does not make that big of a difference on export. I don't know if this is something Apple's got to optimize down the road so it does work, but we'll have to stay tuned and see if this gets better. Running my test in Apple Motion, we can go ahead and hit play on the timeline and we see the Vega takes over right here. And we have smooth playback, which is really nice in motion because this is where you want to keep playback going as you're tweaking things. And now when we go up to export and we'll export this as a 4K file, we can see now the 460 takes over very disappointing, but this is something Apple's gonna have to get straightened out as it is really not fully supported at this point in time. Now as the clip is done and we hit play on the video file, we can see right now the Vega takes over for playback. So it's like they're half in, but they're not all the way in. So I don't know what's going on here if they had trouble and had to step stuff back. This is motion version 5.4.1 and Final Cut version 10.4.1. So we'll have to see what future updates bring. So all in all, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to use this card for any productivity, Final Cut Motion, it is not fully supported at this time. The glitching in Final Cut makes it very unusable to get any work done. But if you plan on using the card for gaming, by all means, this is where the card really shines. If you are interested in this card further, I do have the link in the description to the 650 bundle. I've also included the link to the 550 bundle, which includes the Sapphire RX 580 card. A little cheaper price, but damn good performance also. Check them out and let me know what you think. This is Dan with Dan and Mac.